Okay, welcome everybody in this course that I built specifically for data scientists and business analysts. We're going to cover a ton of machine learning engineering and operations content. If you want to take your skills to the next level and build an end-to-end -end machine learning system, we're going to go over the feature engineering, the model development, the model training, and the model serving in one of the most practical way there is, which is just to start by, by building code and iterate and improve on it as we go. The problem that we're going to try to solve is what is the optimal betting strategy at the game of ballot money. The way that we're going to solve it is we're going to train a machine learning model to look at the cards that are in our hand and give us a, a percentage probability that this starting hand is a win considering a contract that can be bet on. Obviously, the main focus of this whole training is machine learning engineering and this use case is just a way to have an end-to-end -end project that we can work on. But here we're gonna review code that you can afterwards use for any project you, you want to work on. The way that this training is gonna go is we are first gonna build everything from scratch, just like you would do as a data scientist tackling this, this use case for the first time. We're then gonna move on towards refactoring the code that, it, that we wrote as a proof of concept into a set of machine learning pipelines that are going to be the basis of our machine learning system. We're going to start with the development of a proper processing pipeline that is going to take us from the raw data that we have of the games towards the actual feature store that contains all the features we're going to need to develop the model. We're going to see some cool coding patterns here to make sure that this code is scalable and that we can quickly go from small samples towards big data. We're then going to move on to the development pipeline, the training pipeline and the serving pipelines, which are all going to be critical to iterate more and more towards building the right solution for this use case. And then finally, when we have refactored the code that we have developed in a productized way through better scripting and better, better code design, we're gonna see how we can leverage cloud platform, in this case, Google Cloud, as a way to scale and improve on the solutions that we found and that we're gonna be using for the backend of the application itself. We're gonna start by loading our feature store in Google BigQuery so that we can quickly move on to to evaluate the features that are going to be the most useful for our use case. We're then going to move on to deploy our model development and training pipeline in an actual virtual machine so that we can run compute intensive activities like the actual training of the model uh, on a bigger sample of data and much, much faster. We're going to learn to optimize our machines so that we make sure that we don't run out of computing power or that we don't overflow our memory usage. As an extra, we're also going to see how Vertex AI can help us fact fast track the whole development of the modeling by building end-to-end -end machine learning pipelines that are very transparent and that provide us very quick insights into the development of the use case. Finally, we're going to leverage the full power of serverless architecture by deploying the productized model as a Lambda function or as a Google Cloud function. This basically means that you bring your serving cost at an all-time low because you only use the computing resources that you need whenever it's being required, which is pretty awesome. Throughout the whole development of our models, we're going to leverage MLflow to manage the life cycle of our model and make sure that we keep track of what model we believe are ready for reviews and what models are reviewed for deployments. And finally, we are going to leverage the incredible power of Airflow to implement a custom pipeline that we're going to call the model drift so that we can periodically monitor that our model is providing the results that it should provide. We're going to schedule this pipeline to run on a weekly basis and we're going to make sure that it reports to us whenever things look a little bit off, basically. That's everything we're going to cover in this training. I hope you're excited. If you are, don't hesitate to reach out and hope to talk to you soon.